question as we go. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, okay, and by the way, uh, well, first, uh, Bryce Hardy, I know that he was planning on being here to speak with him earlier. Bryce, are you here yet? Yep, I'm here. Very good, sir. Adam Ovian, which we need to talk about. Adam, Deb Raymond. Deb's here. I know you're here. I know yep. you're here, Deb. Tom Carson. You. Okay. I'm here. Cindy Jacobs. Here. Marco Pace. Here. Brianna Timbro. Leslie. Here. Judy Keene is here. Mr. Pentolo, I know you are here, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Mar Marilla. Tony Martino. Here. Soledad Pitrozello. And I have Kevin Sullivan. Okay. Um, just so we can take a note, if we can remove Shelly Carbone uh, from this list, she is now an official council member um, and not a member of EDIC. So if we can remove her, that would be great. Um, I'd like to approve our minutes from our July 7th meeting. You guys want to take a moment and review? I had one question for Leslie. Maybe you might know this. I know for um, the River Restaurant, I'm just curious. It says 100 to 120 max occupancy. Do we know what that number is? I know I, I'm kind of skipping. I will let you know that Joya texted me this morning. Okay. And she said it's 100 person capacity. And the pricing is $4,200. <laughs> they are recommending an outdoor tent. Oh, outside okay. in the tent because it's September versus October. Hmm. Okay, we can talk about that. I know what that is a line item here. Um, can we have a motion to approve the meetings, uh, the minutes, excuse me? So I'll move. A second, please. Deb Raymond, you're on mute, but we'll take, I showed that, saw that sign at hand, so you're good. Um, so Thank that you. was, uh, yep, that was um, uh, seconded by Deb Raymond. Tony Martino was first. Great. Well, again, welcome, everybody. Is there any mem member of the public here that has any questions or comments uh, for the EDIC? Okay, not seeing that. We'll move on. Uh, development project updates. I did text with Joy this morning. She gives her regrets. Um, she is, uh, um, uh, there's a big queue on her family's house. The whole family got uh, COVID, um, but she's turned the corner and doing better. Um, I know she had mentioned she had sent the development project updates to Denise. Denise, are you with us today? Okay, Cheryl, did you get anything from uh, Denise on development project updates by chance? I did not see anything. If you're still here, Cheryl. All right, guys, um, we're going to move on that. That was Joya's bailiwick. She does a great job of that. But again, she's not available uh, this week. Um, anybody have any questions? Because uh, she did say if there was any questions or concerns on any of the projects, assuming any of the um, particular parcels we looked at, she would address that uh, to you. Any questions on any of the items that we've discussed in the past? Any particular uh, buildings or lots? Judy? Just that I, she somehow I've been getting uh texts or emails from uh, whoever, I don't remember, uh, about what's going into the Hartford Business Journal. Is there a, a way that we could get the information before the Hartford Business Journal or, you know, I feel as though we're the last ones to know. Yeah, and um, I don't even, one of them was Mediplex or the uh, nursing home site. And the other one was, Oh, Starbucks. And maybe those were already completed anyway. But, um, you know, it'd be good if we could get those articles right away rather than waiting. That's just my thing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Judy. I'm pretty sure Joy is the one that does. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Um, we're still streamlining that. But um, you're right. I've got the item. Hopefully you guys got the email from Joy on the um, on the Starbucks edition, along with the uh, the rendering of that, which was pretty nice, um, uh, which Sulo um, is going to be part of. Um, that's a good point, Judy. I mean, it'd be nice if you asked a question by a member of the public on something that we have the answer before they read it. I agree. So uh, that'll be one question that I'll pose to Joy. Thank you for that. Any other questions on any uh, development project updates that we've discussed in the past? All right, guys, we'll move forward. 
Um, salute to business. Uh, we, we started down that road, Leslie. Um, and if you want to fill it in some of the blanks, as you guys know, that is scheduled for September 21st. Uh, the tenth thing is a new thing to me. If you want to go in and, and talk a little bit more about that, if you have any more information, that'd be great. I think it's an interesting idea. Well, that's, you know, that was the gist of the text that Joya sent over this morning at about nine o'clock when she told me she wasn't going to make the Zoom. She said that they're recommending doing the tent outside. That way there they can keep everybody together and it'll be somewhat of a, you know, outdoor, indoor environment, mostly outdoor with a tent. But I think that's also down the one that's down the, by the patio by the river, correct? Right. Yeah. And she said that they'd be able to fit 100 people there. I think at the last... Um, uh, marketing meeting, we were talking about the pricing. Um, we were talking about the pricing. I think it was last year was $30. We we're talking about going to either $30 or $35. And then Joya came back with the pricing that they're going to charge us $42 per person out the door. So is it too much to, to request that the ticket price go from whatever it was last year to $42 a person? I know in previous years, the EDIC subsidized some of it. So I don't know what we have for subsidy for this. So they're going up on price and making us go out to the tent. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't I don't get well, that. I don't know if they're going up on price, actually, or if we just subsidized it more last year. I think, Leslie, I think we should check that out. Uh, putting us outside and going up in price seems a little bit. I mean, even the bathrooms are harder to get to for the people and things like that. So we should def definitely check that price. Yeah, and they don't want us inside because we're going to take away from their their everyday business Dinner. So by throwing us outside, which is totally awesome. And it's a beautiful area. I don't think there's anything wrong with like what we are. But, you know, I think that if they went up in price because we're going to be inside, it would make sense because, you know, you're taking your the business away from their a la carte, you know, the public, you know, so. I, I don't know if they're charging us more or if we would just be paying more. Food is more expensive, though. So, <laughs> yeah, no question. I haven't heard yet. Um, let's take that under advisement. Um, let's, and I'd like to talk with Joya um, on that as well. Um, and and when, when are you guys planning to actually do a, a, a walk over there, Leslie? The uh, tent is beautiful. It's I it's a great facility. But doing it within the next two weeks, but she's also sick. So, yep. Okay, I would probably um, please let me know when you plan on doing that. All right. Do you have any vacations planned, Mark? That I need to know about. Um. Well, I'm, uh, th uh, I th the I think your next meeting for the marketing is was uh, the 29th, and I'm I am away that uh, that, that week. All yep. Right. And I'm, I'm actually free Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week. If you want to do it, maybe sooner than later might be better if it works for them, um, okay. which I'm sure they can make that work. All right. I'll talk to Joy and see what she could do. Okay. So your question uh, was, should we go to $42 a ticket? What did we charge last year? Was it 30? I think 30? it was 30. I think it was 30 last year. Yeah. yeah. Um, what does the group uh, feel with regards to an increase on the ticket price? And I think EDIC, I think we had eight or we uh, had eight or nine thousand dollars budgeted, I think, for that, um, which we were using to offset the expense uh, to bring that price down. Why don't we find out about that, Leslie, whether or not they're raising the price? And I want to confirm what we had budgeted for that item. Um, I, I think it was eight or nine thousand dollars that we actually had set aside uh, for that event. I, I'm going to look at that. Yep, the I'm sorry. thirty dollars last year was just coming out of COVID, and um, it was the first time we were there. I'm sure they were giving a, us a very good price last year. I think we should pay the forty-two dollars. Um, I'm not sure whether you want to be inside or outside. If there's no bathrooms available outside, definitely inside. Well, they do have new bathrooms below the building uh, there now, um, which are very nice, actually. So that's not as much of an issue as it has been. Um, but we should talk about it. I mean, if it's in climate weather, if it's raining uh, that particular uh, you know day, that could be an issue uh, with people walking down there. Um, so um, that's something new to me. Is that something they propose, Leslie? Yes. Um, I'm the tent? Okay. Yes, they propose, they're proposing that we go to the tent, like Rick said, that they'll be able to um, get, you know, like the whole restaurant filled to whatever he's, they're doing their restaurant capacity and, you know, take us on as a private party. 
Okay. All right. Um, I don't see an issue with the with the increase in price um, uh, either. I think if people are coming, I don't if it, whether it's thirty or forty two dollars. I don't think that's going to make a significant difference. Um, and last year we had standing room only um, because of the size of the venue. Actually, I think the tent can hold more than a hundred, but we'd have to look at that as well. But um, uh, I think I don't have an issue uh, on that. Is that an item? Um, anybody have a concern on the forty-two dollar price? I don't think so either. Okay, I think we're okay with that, then, Leslie. Um, All right. The only thing I will tell you is that last last year it was a great event, um, very well attended. Um, but there was people. I think we need to either get a hold of Westfield Life. Um, or the rare reminder or all the above. And let's publish as soon as we can the people who are being, uh, or businesses that are being represented. A lot of people came up to me afterwards and said, geez, if I had known that X was gonna be awarded or the restaurant, um, I would have uh, part I would have come and participated. So if we can uh, make a note of that um, and speak with Westfield Life, I think it would be a neat little article for them um, uh, as well on who we're going in. Um, from a PR perspective, I, I don't want to throw everything to marketing, but it kind of falls in. Uh, we've asked Wesso Life to attend that event in the past, and it is a really good event. And I don't, I can't remember them being there the last four or five years, frankly. Maybe we need to reach out to them very specifically and say, hey, this is a big, it's, the, it's one of the premier events in town, and we'd like to have uh, you be there and see if we can get some commitments and get some press out of that event um, as well. They have not been there. Uh, can you, you guys recall? Them being there, I cannot. Yeah. Okay. A reminder too. It's just uh, they could post the event and so on. Absolutely. Uh, same with um, if Marco, if you want to make a note, that'd be something great for the great elm unless it's already on there. My guess is it probably already is. Um, I think the date might be on there, but you know the awardees and the details are not. Those would be great yeah. things to get in there as well. So we can work on that and I'll share more about the great element in just a couple of minutes, but yeah, we have access if, to it now. Yeah. If I could just great. say something again, this is another issue where um, we can't just rely on Weathersfield Life. We can't rely on the rare reminder. It, it should be a press release. It should be a social media posting. It should be all that stuff that's free for us. And so we don't, you know, it, and that's the way we're just gonna have to start thinking about getting our message out. We cannot rely on these reporters covering events. We have to do it ourselves. You can also send in an article to uh, Weathersfield Life. And I will tell you that the deadline for uh, the late August, early September article is, is the 15th. So if you have an article written, they will publish it. Um, and uh, the other one is the Harper Business Journal. Obviously they're covering Weathersfield now. So let's get something in there. Again, we can write an article and, and put it in. I agree. I agree. We'll we'll get that press release working on. Thank you. Hey, Tom, any expertise? Because I know that's your world that you want to pass on to Leslie on where it should go or whatnot. I, any expertise you can share would be great. I know that's your, your world. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if it's just, if we know who the awardees are going to be, it can go out, you know, I mean, I, I think the town could send it out through their email list to let them know that this is happening. I mean, I don't know to what extent we can promote um, events like this through through the town town email, but we just need to say that we, we're proud to honor, you know, these businesses, these people. The event is on this day. This is what the ticket price is. Love to have members of the public there, and um, start with that. And then at the event itself, you know, we can take pictures and do it all. You know, but but just sort of waiting for Weathersfield Life to run a story three weeks after the fact, you know, it's or we'll promote it in advance. It's just we just have to start thinking differently about all this stuff. Yeah, and just to second that as well, um, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Tom. Um, we've obviously talked about this issue many, many times. Um, I would say that um, we have full access to the Great Elm website. Um, but as I talked about with you know Mark and Fred and others in one of our previous meetings. You know, I think, you know, I'm not sure where we're at or where our ability is at to, to receive funding um, to help change the way we do things from a web perspective. Um, the town website, uh, as many people here know, is very lacking, is very out of date, uh, unreliable. Um, we've had some major issues with it ourselves. 
to the extent that we want to, you know, take ownership and use the Great Elm as much as possible to keep really churning these stories out, um, then at least we have a landing place. You know, I've been trying to, you know, express to Leslie and Judy and, and Joya and our marketing committee and, and whoever else is on it that, you know, we need a place where that content's just going to live in perpetuity. And then we need to promote the hell out of it socially and everywhere else digitally. And once we do, there's going to be a groundswell of just normal Google taking over uh, by indexing our sites regularly. Um, but I think, you know, Tom's 100% right. I mean, we really need a, a digital front. And I would love to see if there's any plan between Great Elm and the Weathershield Town site, um, whether we can make some strides in a new direction. Leslie uh, Civitello, if you want to work on um, just a, uh, an article, uh, you know, with the uh, attendees being honored that it's a spectacular venue and a, a wonderful night. Mark uh, used some great words there, but um, I'll be happy to work on it with you and maybe we can get it in for the 15th. Yeah, I just have to confirm with Joya, you know, what the pricing is and how we're going to pay. I don't know if they do. Are we doing um, Evites or not Evites? Eventbrite? I mean, is it cash or check only? We're not accepting credit cards or are, can we do that at the door? Do we know? Yeah, we don't know. We should be able to take, We does the town have an opportunity? Do we have a, um, a cube or anything that we can use to take credit card at that event? A lot of people do ask that. That would be a lot easier for most people. Absolutely. I can check with um, parks and see what they have for events and Thanks. see if we have something. Okay. So we'll have people pre-register and they can pay, pay online or pay at the door or something like yep. that. Well, if yep. we're going to accept credit cards, let them pay ahead of time with the credit card. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thank you. Deb Raymond. You. But, sorry. So are you, Leslie, are you guys still going to send out an uh, Eventbrite notification as well or no? How are people going to know about it? Um, probably not on Eventbrite then, because okay. unless we're using them to sell tickets, we can't use them to do it. But we could set up an event on Facebook on the Great Elm, on the Great Elm Facebook page, and make that a thing, and then do the press releases and send that yeah. out. Okay. You know, and I think um, there was, or there probably still is, a constant contact database that we used to use. You know, like a year or two ago to send out. Evites to everybody. Yeah. So I'll see if Joya can reach out. We also have um, 1,425 people currently following the Great Elm on Facebook. So there's another huge audience and it's very direct, um, at least for those people who are, you know, logging in. But that's 1,425, you know, different people. So that would be another opportunity. Yeah. Leslie, if time gets tight, I'm happy to help in any way you know that. So just reach out to me. Thank you. Oh, also, the Weathersfield Chamber does have 21 followers or likes on Facebook, so we're certainly happy to do that. And I've also used Patch, Weathersfield Patch, and Nextdoor, and they're free. So those are uh, options as well. Use all of the above. Yeah. We need a bigger tent. <laughs> um, all right, that's good feedback. Any other uh, comments regarding uh, our salute to business? That is very good input. Great, let's move on. Um, I have nothing under new business. Actually, I do have one thing I want to add. Um, the we talked about in the last meeting, which were in the minutes, a developer a round table or and I was thinking it really shouldn't be a, a recognition thing because there may be some developers that we want to get at this event. Um, that may not uh, need to be awarded because they haven't done anything yet in town, but really more of a developer roundtable. Um, uh, we are our uh, salute to business is September 21st, and I was talking with Joy that we will get together, and I'll talk to marketing uh, about this and how we can promote that and reach out to the potential developers. The guys that have done and, and, and companies and women that have done business here in town, also a couple that are kind of on the fence and really more of kind of a dinner, but a round table to kind of discuss where we're at. And I think by that point, we're also going to have some um, other things, which from a uh, developer perspective will be of interest uh, to those to those people. Um, that'd be one thing. The other item that I've got 
uh, just real quickly is that we have a, um, uh, to help promote, you know, Marco's done a great job improving our digital infrastructure, he and, and marketing, uh, that's his world, but it is lacking. And then infrastructure is slowly being built and to further utilize the Great Elm certainly is, is you know, we own it, we know people are using it and it really, we're trying to get that to be kind of the be all, end all for information. Um, but uh, with regards to promoting that site, the Great Elm site, we have a quote of $153 uh, a month that we went to uh, went to Wesso Life, and we want to have a static ad uh, in Wesso Life. Um, it's not under contract, so we can start it or end it any time we'd like. But basically, it's to basically promote um, the Great Elm, um, and also promote anything that EDIC or RDA or anything that we're involved with to help promote those particular areas. And kind of little bullets in there to say, for more information, go to the Great Elm. Um, it's a tickler. Um, it's $153 a month. Um, and I wanted to present that to EDIC um, as an item. I'd like to make a motion um, that we uh, can expend that money um, and begin a little bit of marketing for the Great Elm. Um, uh, so with that being said, um, I would like to make a motion that EDIC approve uh, $153 a month for an ad in Westfield Life uh, to help promote uh, the Great Elm uh, and any other product, uh, projects or initiatives that either EDIC or RDA are working on. I'd like to second. Leslie seconds. Um, how about commentary? Questions from the group regarding this? Judy? Use that as an ad for the salute to business. I just chatted that, but um, I put in it, the first one should be what's coming up. The, uh, and then add the um, uh, great elm in it as well, but focus on the salute first. Absolutely. The, the concept of the ad is that it's going to be it's going to focus on the Great Elm. The heading will talk about visit the Great Elm um, and, and we're going to talk about quick bullet point highlights that we've got going. Visit the Great Elm for more information type of a thing just to build more um, foot traffic. Uh, Deb, you had a question. Um, yeah, did did we check into uh, the rare reminder too? they have a Weathersfield page that I, it appears to me it's all uh, PSAs. So maybe we could and I'm happy to call Libby if, if nobody else has, but I think we should utilize that as well. Absolutely. Is there a charge for that? I mean, I, would I they do? Th I don't think there is. Hmm. Hmm. So, so I can reach out. Content. Content. Yeah, what, what's they're that? looking all the time for content, yeah. Um, if you want to reach out, I don't know who Libby is, Deb, and get back um, to Joya and I on that. That would sure. be great. Thank yeah. you. Any other questions regarding this? I, I guess the one question I have is that I, I, I just like to know exactly sort of what what we would be spending the money for and what the advertisement would say. Um, you know, are we confident in the content on the Great Elm that we should just be promoting it with money to drive hits and to what extent, you know, is it important for the community to visit the Great Elm, is, I guess is what I'm saying, you know, because it's, um, and, and if we were to do any of it, I would sort of just say, I would do it over two or three months, and then to see if it has any sort of traction at all, and, and then just really measure beginning and end and see whether or not it's having any impact at all. Um, it's a good point. I mean, it's, it is money. So it needs to be money well spent. Marco, when we, if people were able to, um, uh, if they see the ad in life and what we're trying to do time is, is increase foot traffic to a point where we don't need to be advertising anywhere that people just begin to utilize uh, the site, it's promotion. If I grabbed 10 people in town and said, great Elm, um, maybe one out of 10 might be familiar with what it is. Um, and that's really low. So what we're trying to do is get anybody who is reading Wesso Life religiously. I'm one of them. It's probably one of the only things I read religiously every month. Um, and I think it's, it would be a good venue to start. The content of it um, uh, would be whatever we're working on and at that particular time. So I don't know the, I don't have specificity on exactly. Obviously, we would promote um, the salute to business would be one natural item that we put in there. But the whole idea is kind of like the ticklers that you get on your phone, you know, hit on this. And, and to get more information, visit the Great Elm. We just want to make that a, a, a tremendous resource for the town. And on the town, we're gonna, we'll talk a bit more um, in a minute about it once we get there, but also with regards to, to the business side, where I think there's an opportunity for us to promote not only the personal side, but also the business side 
um, of what's going on in town. Um, it is, uh, it, there is no contract and it's $153 a month, uh, but we, we can, I agree, if we get no insight and I derailed myself, Marco, I'm sure there's a spot we can put on the Great Home website on the homepage, um, did you see us in Weathersfield Live, click here type of thing. So maybe we can get some type of a res of response. Well, the way the way to really do it is this. Um, so we have the Great Elm site, and you know Tom's again 100% on the money with the suggestion about, hey, what are we just gonna, what are we going to be doing, right? Generally speaking, you could we could promote in that ad the Great slash, you know, life or something like that, like Weathersfield Life as a URL, and we can track that URL. Like essentially, don't use that URL. Let's say it's the Great slash Web Life. And if we publish that in the Weatherfield Life and we publish it nowhere else, okay, then we can track that as what's called a campaign URL in Google Analytics. And that allows us to see very specifically who's using that URL, not just any old URL, not just the greatum.com generically, so that we can get people to an actual landing page to measure, to really understand how we're doing. But I will go back to what I said a couple of minutes ago. Our town, we need a, a revamped vision for how to how content's going to live, operate, and breathe. And I, I do believe that if we go back to the beginning of, of the pandemic, um, that our town wasn't as good at communicating that information on the town site. And if there's an argument to be made there that says, hey, we need to have a new digital presence, we need to revamp our digital strategy content-wise to educate our you know, townspeople much more efficiently, um, and I'm all for it. I'd love to be a part of that, you know, planning discussion. Um, but the reality is, and I just had this come up, I was working with um, Danielle over in the uh, tax uh, office regarding like business personal property, just for my own business as an example. And she said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm working on this business list. And she's gathering all this data from the, the um, Secretary of State. And then I said, well, you know, we've got our list that's on the town website that we know is defunct you know, the one that's the business listing. And we've got all these like separate and disparate, you know, sources. Those are the types of things. If we're going to create a list and we want to represent business as well, we need a good bona fide list that someone has researched, someone has a plan behind. Danielle, for all, you know, for all it's worth, she might be the, the keeper of the, the best data um, if she's getting it from the Secretary of State's office. But one way or another, I think we need to really improve our, our vision for those sites. In the meantime, though, if we're going to launch an ad, I would put at least what, what I like to refer to or what we refer to in our world as a campaign landing page. So market it as thegreatelm.com slash any name, whatever you want to put there. And, and we can use that. But again, don't publish that anywhere else. Don't share that in any emails. Physically, just leave it for the Weathersfield Life publication. We can measure it in Google Analytics. And we'll know, generally speaking, how many people are using that and we'll have gotten a hold of it because of whether should like. That's one of the ways to really target whether there's any effectiveness at all. But the content really needs to be rethought, I think, on Great Elm, on the Weatherfield site, and, and beyond. So I'm happy to be a part of that. I just think that we need to, we really need to step back to look at that. It's been ignored for too long on the, the town site. And then I would concur with Marco, you know, and that I don't think it might not make sense we do evaluation of all of our sites to start promoting ones. So, you know, I, I guess this is a question more for the town administration, whether or not it's something that we think is going to happen in the near term in terms of totally uh, revamping our web, web presence in town altogether. Yeah, I have a, um, I, I think that's a really good idea, Marco. And uh, that's, you know, the more analytics, the better and measuring uh, its effectiveness. Um, I have a question about, I, uh, Mark, you mentioned it was a quote unquote static ad. Um, and, um, but then there was a suggestion that we uh, incorporate events and, you know, uh, so it, Who's if we have a who's going to design it, and then we have it if we have some kind of event or some kind of change month to month, who's in charge of that, and does it require not only just content but design? Do we have that all set up. I can tell you that um, when dealing with the Weathersfield Life, they have a designer on staff 
that puts all the ads together for us. So we don't have to worry too much about that. We can give them the logos that we want them to place. We could give them the dates. We could give them the information and whatever else we want to include in the ad, and then they will put it together for us. So we don't have to actually do anything. Okay. So then the marketing will decide uh, we have a new event um, that we'd like to promote or something, you know, kind of new on the horizon month to month so that it's not a completely static ad, which I think month to month people may ignore. When I said static, um, my interpretation of static might be not yours. The idea is that it's going to be static in the sense we're going to be in every month and we're trying to be positioned in the same spot if we can inside West of Life as well. That's what I meant. But no, it'll be living and breathing and updated with content every every month. Well, listen, and then, yeah, and the marketing committee will be tasked with that, you know, mm -hmm. deciding the next event, the next, you know, thing that they want to know. That's exactly. And one more thing that, you know, Patty, Leslie, you know, uh, Judy, myself, Joya, we've been discussing also is um, really implementing now, um, I think Joy has set up the account for it, is to finally get going with some QR codes. Um, so there are what are called static QR codes, where you essentially publish you know, a QR somewhere, and it's gonna always go to one URL, one web address, all right? And then there are dynamic QR codes, where we could publish a dynamic QR code in conjunction with this ad. And then we would have the ability at the drop of a hat to change it anytime we want. It has nothing to do with republishing anything in, in the, the actual um, Weathersfield life. And we can have that go anywhere we want on a given day or in a given week or month. And the beauty behind that also is measurement. Um, we can measure who's using the QR codes. So we can set up one specifically as a QR code for that Weathersfield life ad, maybe not even do the URL at all and, and just simply get them to the QR code and then we can dictate month to month, again, week to week, however often we see fit, what they're going to receive. Any other comments regarding this? Okay, uh, we did have a second on that motion. Um, uh, we'd like to take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, I'm going to say no for now. Okay. Uh, motion carries, so we'll start that. Thank you, guys. Um, all right, uh, Mr. Penelo, uh, Councilor Penelo, are you there for town council? You guys hear me? Yes, sir. I actually, uh, you know, if um, if, if uh, I think I saw Kenny on here, um, I was actually unable to attend the last meeting, and we're not meeting again until I believe September 6th. So, Ken, if, if you wanted to fill in um, that gap, by all means go ahead uh thank you pat if it's okay with with you mark we had some uh, we had some general discussion about the arpa funds on our meeting august 1st we will have more detailed presentation and discussion on our meeting september 6th as we talked about last time at the last edic meeting as pat reported we uh did have a set aside for economic development, still waiting for that full plan. I know that Fred and, and I think Mark, you're part of still working on that full plan to present uh, what the use of that money would be. Uh, but uh, it is in our plans as a council to have that set aside. Um, that was the biggest issue we discussed. We discussed a bunch of minor issues and we also had an issue at the council uh, on the airport easement, but that was put off uh, as was the issue with Keisha Farm that was put off. So no updates there. And the only other thing I'll update you with somewhat related to EDIC uh, and the town is that um, I and several people on this call attended the Times Fool Company fundraiser. Uh, Bryce was there, Bryce and I and others, as I said, Bryce and I were chosen out of the audience to do a sword fight or mimic one. I was terrible, Bryce was terrific, and if it was a real sword fight, I would have been killed instantaneously. But more importantly, <laughs> next week, the Times Fool Company is doing a, uh, I think it's four over four days, it starts Tuesday the 16th, performance, free performance of Macbeth in Old Weathersfield at the Keeney, outside, outdoors. I hope you all can make it. It's great for a community. I hope you can go to the restaurants before or after. It's a great community event. Uh, and we're so happy that Times Fool is a, uh, a new company here in Wethersfield. But all good on the council, Mark, and happy to answer 
any questions, but nothing really new other than the big stuff with ARPA that we're going to be having a further discussion September 6th at our next council meeting. Um, thank you, Councillor Lesser, uh, for that. And yes, that is economic development for sure. Um, people will come and they will eat ice cream and have pizza and, and have good food um, out there. So thank you for, for bringing that up. I'm looking forward to that it's in, in our backyard. Um, any other questions or comments for uh, Councillor Lesser or for Councillor Pentelow? All right, Ken, thank you for that report. Mr. Manager, are you with us, sir? Yes, I'm here. You have the floor. Um, just echoing what Ken said, um, you know, the uh, the work that Mark and Joya and I, and I know Tom has been involved as well um, on coming up with programs that we can present to the council for the use of those ARPA funds. The council has set aside, um, it's a total of one point, almost $1.2 million, I believe, uh, was, was the amount. And um, for economic development purposes, um, and that is money that we'd like to see uh, that we take advantage of to um, attract businesses into town, to uh, help those that are here expand, and um, you know, for the purpose of economic development, really. So we're looking at different program models, and we're going to be presenting that to this group, and then ultimately to the town council, um, and then once they're in agreement with those programs we will um, get them on the streets as soon as possible so um, i think that's exciting and it's a, it shows the council's commitment um, to this work and uh, i think it's a great opportunity for this group to really make a difference so i look forward to that thank you mr manager any questions for uh, mr presley cindy yeah. Yeah, um, I understand that within that $1.2 million budget, there's uh, $50,000 for uh, planning, and that's kind of a very specific um, uh, engineering plan, uh, renderings. Um, I think the last uh, iteration was from Church Street to Wells Road along Silas Dean. Um, so I'm just wondering uh, if that's a part of that. It still is. And if so, um, there is a, a time component uh, when the money will be released and then when we would go out for a plan because we need a plan to get uh, to attract uh, federal dollars and state bond money. A lot of money is out there and timing is important. Yeah, so that that is not part of this one point two million dollars. Those are those are separate initiatives and there's money already set aside um, for um, work along the Silas Dean. So we're, we're using those funds that are that are already established for that so that's that is not part of that money so there, there is no time issue with that we're actually uh we've actually already begun working with some engineers to put together the scope and things like that so we're, we, we are gonna um begin that process sooner we don't have to rely on getting this other work done to, to begin that oh that's good news now there is a sort of subcommittee of um the edic that is the silas dean um improvements so um um, I stand ready to, uh, as a member of that uh, chairperson, actually, I stand ready to help and assist and attend in any uh, in any way I can to be helpful right. in any way I can. Absolutely, I appreciate that, Cindy. And we will absolutely be reaching out to that subcommittee and and others as well to uh, get as many thoughts as possible as we move this project forward. It's still, a, we're really just scoping what need what would need to happen from a um, proposal standpoint. First, we're not getting into any details of uh, of the actual work yet, other than to say, engineering wise, what do we need to do, and what's that going to cost, and and inspecting all that out right now. So, um, also setting up to apply for grants to other grants to actually do the projects and the planning and all those types of things. So, but we will we will be bringing you all into the loop on that. Um, okay, so I mean, in the time frame of this, I mean, of can you just kind of give an idea? Are we talking? One month, two months, six months. Uh, for any, uh, for getting you you all involved. Well, uh, for getting uh, putting the plan together, because uh, so, that's so, so be the, the foundation for getting funds. Yeah. So the so the putting the plan together is going to um, really be driven by the the opportunities that are out there now. We it's really important that we target not the ARPA funds for this, but we target the transportation funds that are out there. It just mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of money there for that. Um, we are working now 
with Krog uh, to develop um, the approach to that with our with our engineering firm um, because they're the ones that um, were designated by the state to um, take the lead on those projects for 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 our municipality and the others in the region. So we are we've been meeting with them um, a few times now, and uh, so we're gearing up. So we'll I'll have a better idea of that we thought we were going to be able to apply right out of the gate in September, but they're recommending we hold off to the next round, which I think is in January. But we're gonna um, we have another meeting on that, so I don't know definitively yet what their uh, recommendation is going to be. But we'll get back to you as soon as we know that we've got another meeting set up next week, I think. Um, Fred, just a quick question. I know obviously all the different departments and commissions and whatnot came and, and filed for ARPA money um, for particular asks. Have those particular asks been approved, uh, like for facade improvement for us, et cetera, or is that still being measured? Some of those items have been approved, the, the more time sensitive ones. Um, others have not. So, um, as, as Ken mentioned earlier, um, we'll be going back to the council with more detail about those. Not all of those projects are going to be funded, I'll tell you right now, because there were $12 million in requests and there were $7 million, $7.6 million available. So um, so a fair amount has been uh, approved with respect to the, the, the time sensitive requirement. I'll say that, you know, the projects that we have to do because of state mandates and things like that. Um, other things are going to come back to the council in September and even beyond um, as they decide how they want to spend the remainder of those funds. But um, uh, so the answer is some of them have, but but not all. And as far as the facade improvement, um, those that has not been brought forward. And I think part of that is that they wanted to see the plan that you all have for the 1.2. So maybe that could be wrapped in. That might be able to, the 50,000 there might be able to be wrapped in to, um, to that 1.2. The, the, your request on economic development um, might make sense to come out of that 1.2. I don't know if the council is going to look at giving more on top of that, but that, that's a conversation for the council. Um, and uh, we can have that conversation in September and beyond. So um, would you say that we need to, to, to revisit and say, these are the items we got a list. And again, I know everything here is kind of um, it, it, the cement hasn't hardened yet. It's still yeah. kind of a slurry. Um, but we had some items that the council at that at that time had said they were comfortable with others that they weren't comfortable with. Should we, I should we re resubmit those and say these are the things we were focused on? Uh, in other words, what input do you require from us to make sure that whatever we were looking for, we at least know we've got an at bat uh, yeah, with regards to those. Circle back with Joya. We're having a meeting internally again um, on this with the directors to basically call out those projects of what's left on the list now to say, these are the ones that are really important to these departments and this is why. Um, and so I want a really good understanding of that because some of some of the numbers are quite frankly are old, not necessarily for what you're asking for, but for some other departments, there were a lot of estimates that were used. Um, we're at, at the request of the council, we're also providing them with an accounting of what has been approved to date and what has been spent of that money to date because a lot of estimates were used on what they approved already, and it didn't take as much as, as that. So there's money that's going to be going back into the pod. So we're going to be providing a full accounting of all that, and then uh, and then look to the council's guidance to move forward with the rest of the funds. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Any other questions for uh, Tom Manager Presley? All right, guys. Um, P and Z, Mr. Oikel, are you here, sir? Does not appear. Uh, if anybody from council or if anybody has anything um, on P and Z that might be timely, you can fill in for Mr. Oikel. And I'm going to make a note. I, um, I, I'm not sure if George, I think George may or may not have been at our last meeting. I need to find out if, um, if he's going to be able to attend these meetings or not. I'll put that out to Joya. All right. Any other questions regarding um, P and Z? Comments? Heritage, Judy? We have not met uh, since uh, the end of, uh, since May. Okay. Um, the piece in front of Village Pizza, the new edition is amazing. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. 
Um, yeah. You know, the whole, that, the whole heritage that, thing is fantastic. Yep, that was part of the Heritage Commission. Um, that is it, uh, a piece of the larger uh, heritage trail. And people, uh, you know, I see people all over town looking at those plaques and signs to decide what they want to do next, because they um, all tell us what the history was at that point. The one at Village is all of the shops outlined and restaurants outlined on the map. So um, it's a beautiful, beautiful sign. And we had the unveiling um, in June and it is lovely. Uh, now we just need the town to, that we asked for stones in that whole area. They put little stones underneath the, um, mm -hmm. underneath the plaque, but we want that area to be <clears throat> uh, one that people can walk on and walk up to the, um, the sign. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Any questions for Judy? Cindy? Yeah, I saw the sign. It's lovely. And I, I'm trying to remember if there were any suggested walks, you know, that say, okay, if you go around here, there are these landmarks and this, you know, it's a 0.5 mile walk, anything like that. I think it tells you exactly how long it is. But if you look across the street, there's one right in front of Lucky Lou's. There's some in front of uh, Trinity Church. There's uh, one or two on the green in that area. Um, they are all, and also in the uh, the parcel, the wood parcel down on Middletown Avenue, there's two in there now, I believe. So they're not too far apart. So people can go, uh, you know, see the next one coming. Well, I guess my question is, it's a, it's a wayfinding, it's a map, essentially. Yes, it is, but yeah. it's mainly of that area, of yeah. the Main Street area. I, I just wanted to um, share with you, um, when we were in Glastonbury, um, it was just kind of a, a nice idea, but they had suggested walks and, and, and then they would say that there's this one and this is, and they would say, okay, this is uh, two thirds of a mile if you take these blocks and so on. And it was kind of to promote uh, walkability and as well to share um, landmarks. And, things. and there is a QR code on it that takes you through the whole wayfinding maps. And oh, okay. uh, so, and um, I believe there's a link that also takes you, uh, the, the QR code takes you on the link that would tell you how far apart all the signs are and the mileage. Thanks. I think, I think. I will ask about that though. Any that other questions change. for Judy? We cannot change the sign more than uh, I think every two years. So if a business goes out of business and a new business comes, we cannot add it uh, for a couple of years because there is an expense involved, obviously, to do that. But the QR code, we could change at any time. Thank you, Judy. Any other questions for Judy? Comments for Judy? Great. Leslie, I assume, uh, Wesley Chamber? Uh, yes, uh, a few things. Um, I just wanted to share that we've linked our on our website about Weathersfield to weathersfieldct.gov. It's historic Weathersfield. But there's some errors on the home page that don't link. Um, in particular, uh, the home page shopkeeper's guide to historic village, there's a 404 error. Um, and then the interactive map, there's an error 502. These pages aren't found. So if, if we're linking to a town page, we want those main links, especially on your home page, to work. So I don't know who works on that. Maybe they could fix it. That would be really helpful. Uh, and I also intend to have another page that links directly to the Great Elm because your calendar is voluminous um, and uh, it's worth it for us to do instead of recreating the wheel in terms of events. Um, we are having a strategic planning meeting that we haven't had in several years on September 3rd. It's on a Saturday. We're looking for guest speakers, whoever may be interested. Um, we're having our Halloween Boo Bash on October 29th. Our tickets have gone on sale on Eventbrite, and we're really going to start pushing that once September hits. We also have our uh, barbecue and beer event coming up on October 21st. Um, our holidays on Maine, um, that is underway. We're receiving applications already. Deb Raymond um, is on that, and she's already gotten uh, received a bunch of them. 
Uh, there was concerns about where we're going to place the stage this year so that it's not a cutoff to businesses beyond where it's uh, stationed. So that's something I guess uh, Pat, the chairperson, and Sonny in the town will we'll talk more about. Um, and I think they're going to be scheduling a meeting sometime for the holidays on Maine uh, before the end of August to really get that going. Uh, at our recent board meeting, we talked about the fireworks. Uh, we do not have the funds for 2023. Uh, I don't even think for 2024. We did talk about perhaps setting up a GoFundMe page. Um, that might be an option to try to resurrect the fireworks sooner than later. Uh, and I don't know what's involved in doing that because I know that the, the town is, is part of that process. Um, so we need assistance. There's just, there's, there's no money there from the chamber. Um, also, um, we're looking for more of these Weathersfield shops local clings, if we can have some more. We'd like to give them out to um, our businesses for gifts for new chamber members and, and, uh, and members that want them. Um, let's see. Uh, also, we need some more of these. I'm speaking from the chamber, but also as a person sitting in the Historical Society building. Where I'm sitting, the little closet that I'm in, it's cute. Everyone thinks that I am the welcome center, and I'm happy to be that. So I make sure I have these maps on hand. I'm already all out of them again. And because this is a welcome center, these maps are critical. Everybody wants this map for Old Weathersfield. And I need to share with you that this the Historical Society is closed on Mondays. I'm here on Mondays. It's probably one of the busiest days for the Historical Society. It's a shame it's closed on Mondays because I can't tell you, I'm sitting here, here's my window, it's right in front of me, people see me. So I'm not gonna just push them away. I go to the door, I give them a map. Um, I had someone here last week. It was a, a couple of gentlemen from Paris. They came from Paris, they went to New York for nine days, came to Weathersfield for a couple of days and were going to Boston. So conceptualize that. Paris, New York, Weathersfield, Boston. Okay, so um, we gotta capitalize on that. It's just, it's just absolutely amazing to have those kind of visitors. I should have taken some selfies, I didn't. Next time I will. Um, so we need some more of these maps uh, and even the Historical Society is running low on them as well. Um, I just wanted to know as far as the, um, if there's openings for the EDIC now that Shelly Carbone is on town council. So that's because I may have someone who's interested or perhaps even myself. So uh, I can be part of the voting. Um, let's see, I, well, I wanted to just tell you for the search engines for our website, fireworks is the number one search that they put in. So this is how critical fireworks are to our community. Um, da, 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 let me see. And then Omni Comics. Um, can you tell me if they're leaving Weathersfield? That's my understanding. And that's all I have for the chamber. <laughs> and I hope that's I have about I have about twelve. I have about twelve questions. Um, no, just one first. Do we know? Um, do you know how were the fireworks funded in the past? And and you know because I. I think it's the best event in Weathersfield. I mean, you know, and 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 so it's it's even if there was a GoFundMe set up, I talked to Bryce a little bit about this too. I'm sure he has his own thoughts. But if there was a GoFundMe set up, I'm sure it would get funded. But I'd like to know how, where was the money, where did it come from in the past and why isn't that money there anymore? Because I think we could do a lot more with vendors at, at, the, at the fireworks that yeah. could help pay for that. Um, my understanding, and Deb Raymond can, can pitch in here too if she wants to, my understanding is that we do it through fundraising, and a lot of that fundraising came from the Corn Fest, which by the way, we've renamed it to Weathersfield Autumn Fest. Um, but we haven't had that, I guess, in the past couple of years. That was a big moneymaker. And then with the pandemic, we just haven't been able to do the fundraising to raise the $15,000 that's needed. I think the Corn Fest was not the pocket of change or the bills that everybody wanted. I think it was becoming the pocket of change. Um, Deb May, yeah, she's nodding. Uh, you know, it was uh, just not a moneymaker anymore for the chamber. What's the cost of the fireworks? My understanding is the chamber paid 15 grand. That's 15, what I've been told. 15,000. One five. 
Can I, I mean, just we have uh, so many big businesses in town? Oh like, hey, I just want to add to that. That's just what the chamber uh, contributed. The town contributes just about the same amount, or if not more. It's a very expensive, labor-intensive event, which the chamber's always loved participating in. But it does take um, a lot of money, and um, as Judy said, our corn fest just wasn't cutting it anymore. There were more complaints than uh, compliments, I should say. And so, you know, we've taken a pause on that, and we're hoping to reinvent it. But I'm I'm going to guess that we're not going to be able to raise the funds necessary because the cost of the fireworks went up exponentially last year. Um, you know, I don't have all the numbers in front of me, but I do know that they went up uh, more than 5,000 as far as I remember. Deb? The, the, the cost of the fireworks this year just for the fireworks was $23,000. Okay, yeah, I, I knew it had gone up a, a crazy amount. And, uh, you know, we've tossed around a lot of uh, different events and uh, we actually thought of having perhaps with the town a, um, a golf tournament that could be earmarked specifically for the fireworks. But, and, you know, like they used to say, it takes a village. Well, it's gonna take a whole town in order to bring this back. Um, Kenny, you said, Kenny, you had your hand up. Well, no, thank you, thank you, Pat. And I agree with Tom and everyone else who spoke. This is a really good event for Weathersfield. We should have it back. We should have it again. The townspeople love it. And maybe Tony Martino, former deputy mayor, remembers this. We used to contribute to from the town. Tony, do you remember how much? And certainly we could bring that back up. But, but I do think it is very worthwhile to bring the fireworks back. Yeah, uh, I know we contributed something, but I'm not sure how much it was, Kenny. <clears throat> okay, so maybe we can look at that again and, 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 and other different and partnering with the chamber and uh, I would like to see the fireworks back. I think it's a wonderful community event that a lot of people went to and really enjoyed. So I, I just want to add as well that um, the decision wasn't totally the chambers not to have this, but in previous town leadership, we were told there was no budget for that. So we would have to raise all the funds at that point and it has to take a whole new look. So I think then, I think revamping, I think we should definitely work on getting that. That's an awesome event for our town. Um, it brings a lot of things together, but I think the way it goes, we just figure out how to, how to go about that. I think it's clear to point out that partnering with the chamber, it's really partnering with the town. The town needs to be the organizer and we certainly can, can help and do our part, but it really should be partnering with the town. They should be the lead. Um, I, Leslie, I like the idea of the GoFundMe because um, I think that this is an event that a lot of young people in town want to bring their families to. Yeah. And uh, I think that they're more familiar with GoFundMe's um, if you can't do it as a vehicle of the town, you know, maybe a, a private, do it privately. But um, I think that that's a really good idea. And I, I, I think you'd get, I don't know how much money, but you would get some. Yeah, I think so too. Or like, how is it organized in the past? Because I wonder if it, if it's an event that just needs its own like steering committee or something. Let me give you um, from what I know, um, originally or when it was revised, Joe Marrero and his wife had a big hand in it and their chamber members or they, they were chamber members. And then it went down to the chamber actually organizing it with the help of the town. And, um, you know, it worked out fine. It was not, you know, that part that was the issue. The issue was actually coming up with our portion and we would have to have had it a year in advance. So in order to have it for next year, we would have to have already made whatever it was. And I, I think it was about 20,000. And, um, you know, we'll have to look in, my, in the old minutes, but it had gone up quite a bit from what our share was in the past. And like I said before, we're very happy to do it 
It's just, we don't have the manpower and it would really have to be more of a, um, a larger committee and a larger fundraising. And uh, Judy, I love the GoFundMe. I have heard from other chambers that that's how they've done theirs. Um, and we have spoken about the legalities of having a specific fireworks committee. So the money from year to year could go into a specific account and it could be built upon. So, you know, we're, we talk about it all the time. We, we just need a major fundraiser that um, is going to bring us like 15,000 just for this. Yeah, thank you for, uh, for sharing that. Um, obviously, this is a very um, a fiery issue, the fireworks, in a good way. <laughs> There's certainly a lot of interest here. Um, but out of time, we're going to move on to another category. Um, if EDIC, I mean, we're more than happy to, uh, Leslie, if you want to reach out to us and we can have another conversation about this particular item, um, because obviously it's, it's stimulated some good conversation here. Um, but I'd, I'd love to see the fireworks back as well. I think just by everybody in town would. Um, Leslie, thank you for that report. And Pat, thank you for uh, your input. Um, if we can go on to um, subcommittee reports, marketing communications. Okay. Leslie, I know you kind of shared a lot of your stuff already. I don't know if you have anything in addition to add. Looks like maybe Leslie moved away for a cup of coffee. Let me, uh, um, uh, we'll switch over uh, to Bryce on our finance committee. Bryce? Yep, uh, so this is uh, still a committee uh, getting a, kind of the legs underneath them. So um, Fred reported on the $1.2 million that's gonna be set aside for EDIC. And um, we have a fairly quick turnaround to kind of find some programs that, um, programs that, uh, you know, to expand business and to attract business in the town. So um, I'll be reaching out to the finance committee to find a pretty quick date to get to meet together and uh, start kind of brainstorming with Fred and um, some other uh, other people involved. So um, that's kind of where we are with that. You plan something, what are you thinking about Bryce from a meeting sometime in the next week or two? I have Monday available. I was going to put that out. I know Joy is an integral part of this, so I wanted to make sure she was well. Um, but I, you know, sometime next week. Okay. Um, I, I'm available late Monday. I'm during the up to two o'clock. I'd like to be at that meeting. You don't have okay. to do it. I, you don't have to hold it around me, but I would like to be there. But I'm pretty flexible the entire week except for Monday till about two o'clock. Well, I'll um, shoot but, out an email and we can uh, work it within the group. Great. All right, Bryce, thank you for that, sir. And also other, just, uh, a, other... just another note um, uh, Please. for Weathersfield shopkeepers, um, we are becoming a pretty uh, big group, uh, well, at least within ourselves, um, much more organized. Um, we uh, are also rebranding to not the old Weathersfield shopkeepers. We're going to be calling ourselves Explore Old Weathersfield, um, and uh which is uh, in line with some of our social media and our website. Uh, so we have Porch Fest coming up on August 27th. It's gonna be really exciting. We have 36 bands as of now and um, a ton of sponsors that have come through and you'll be able to, you, you should have already started seeing a bunch of stuff being pushed out on social media. Um, so that's really exciting. We all are also closing the road from Center Street to uh, Lucky Lou's just as Holidays on Main has been. And we are inviting vendors. Um, as of last, early last week or late last week, we've had about uh, 30 vendors signed up. So we're we're pushing some more. So if anyone knows any businesses that want to hand out, not a product, but um, you know anything you want to do, uh, the chamber. I I don't know if you guys are going to have a booth, but you know we are accepting um, applications to be on the street for that event. Awesome. How many bands? We have 36. Holy crap. Road, All right, road, that's wonderful. Shut down from 12 to 6. Bands start at 10.30, and the last one's at 6. Beautiful. Anything else, Mr. Hardy? That's it. Great. Thank you very much. Um, guys, our next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, uh, September 8th. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we don't have any correspondence uh, at this point. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for their time. We do have an RDA meeting uh, scheduled directly after this. Um, it is 107. 
Um, we're going to take five minute break and come back at 112 uh, and we'll start the RDA meeting um, uh, at that point. Guys, thank you uh, for your time uh, today um, and we will see you again very soon. I'd like uh, uh, someone to make a motion to adjourn. Mr. Martino and seconded by the winner is Bryce. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your time and uh, we you. will see you uh, again very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, who's here? Kevin the Sullivan member. from Bike right. Walk Weathersfield is a member of the public. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that, I'm sorry. That's okay, Kevin Sullivan with Bike Walk Weathersfield as a, as a member of the public. Hi, Kevin. Hi.
Okay, guys, uh, it is 1-12. Uh, welcome uh, to the RDA meeting uh, for Thursday, July 7th. I'm not sure if we're still recording or not. I assume that we probably are. Um, I'd like to just start with a roll call. Uh, Tom Carson? Here. Tony Martino? Here. Leslie Civitello? I, I, I don't see Leslie here. Tom, uh, Tom Pentelo? Yes, sir. Morella D'Antonio? Mark Trayan is here, Judy Keene. And also in attendance, uh, we see uh, Councillor Patrick Pentelow. Uh, we also have Kevin Sullivan, uh, Sullivan a member of the public uh, here with us as well. Uh, Pat DePerry, Cindy Jacobs, uh, and Angie um, as well. Welcome everybody. Um, we can start, if you guys have a copy of the minutes, please take a look at the minutes. There are two pages through item 13. Take a quick look so we can approve those. Any questions or comments on our minutes from our last meeting? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, Tony. Great. Uh, let's let's dig in. Um, so, old business. Um, we're looking at um, it's pretty much a carbon copy of our last agenda uh, potential properties discussion. Um, we can go back and revisit from the minutes on anything there. Who has uh, anything to add with regards to our potential properties? I, I will just say that uh, between myself and Joya and the town manager and uh, Councilman Pentlow, we've been meeting with uh, uh, numerous, still meeting with potential uh, new customers for our town. And uh, it's, it's, it's getting better and better. Um, we're learning more what people are looking for to want to come to town and uh, and the partnerships that we're trying to create have been uh, pretty good. So it's going well, Mark. Right. Um, anything, anything on price right, that plaza? I know, Patrick, I think you were working on something there potentially. You mean? Yeah, we, we, we met with a potential uh, investor who was looking um, and it, I, since, uh, I, I know the, um, the individual has since been, uh, overseas on vacation visiting family. Um, but I also did get a call from, um, a real estate agent who was showing it to a developer who was exploring a knockdown and rebuild to do a sort of mixed use development. Um, that was sort of in the preliminary stages, uh, but she wouldn't really give me uh, much more details than that. So um, I'll actually follow up with her today and I can shoot you a text to see where that's at after the meeting, Mark. Thank you, sir. Um, so it has in our minutes that in our, we had a, our last discussion, Fred, um, that I, I was kind of being assumptive at that point on the 1.2 million. And we were, I was kind of told that that was being, um, you know, reviewed and approved. I know that's official now. Um, and I know Bryce uh, is not here, but I think it's certainly important um, to get Bryce and the finance committee, along with members of RDA here, um, on uh, this challenge that we've got to be able to get something in front of council by the second meeting uh, in September. Um, you know, the I was read, I've read a lot of articles and, and whatnot, and I, something was very telling that you shared, Fred, that, and it makes sense to me that, and I want to understand if we're at odds anywhere. I know that the council is looking for specific projects and you're using the word programs, which I think if we develop programs that potential projects to use, that's kind of your thought process. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you can't have specific projects um, like that. I mean, the whole purpose of these programs is to, is to create those and to incentivize those. So I think what the council is looking for is just what do those programs look like? What are the some of the eligibility requirements that we're going to be looking at? You know, is there any? What are the conditions? You know, if they don't achieve, you know, certain goals, you know, that they would have to return some of it, or or how does what does that look like? Um, and there's 
you know, several programs out there that we've talked about um, that are state programs and other localities have programs that have um, developed a lot of these and, and have all these uh, specifics that we can borrow from. And um, so I think, yeah, meeting with Bryce on Monday and, uh, and you all uh, makes a lot of sense. We can kind of start putting some meat on the bones and then presenting that to the council to get feedback from them um, in September and then hopefully um, fine tuning whatever we need to and going back and, and getting the money allocated in October would be great. Um, the, you know, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. There's a lot of different incentives out there. And I think, you know, I've, I've been doing some research on what, you know, the, the best ideas typically aren't original ideas. There's some ideas that somebody else has from other areas. And I've literally been looking at stuff from um, all the way from Oklahoma to Massachusetts uh, with regards to incentives. Um, and I think if we, uh, you know, I, I we'll speak with Bryce, but when we get together, we really need to be coming together. I think everybody should come with at least one solid idea or concept to be able to present to the group so we have a place to start. Unless, you know, um, Mr. Manager, you have a lot of experience, obviously, um, in this area. If you have any particular particular input or guidance, I know we talked about one thing that Joy and I were working on uh, with regards to um, if we invest or provide uh, revenue or um, or working capital to a venture, how we could capitalize on the increase between the current property value and the increased property value that uh, RDA could actually participate, which I think is a unique idea. You know, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, I do want us to have as much input as that we have that we can give that we think are good. But if you have experience on areas that you think would be low hanging fruit for us to begin to work at or explore, Please share with share with us if you have specific things that you know have meat on the bone and have you know will um, um, uh, register with the council on what they're look what they're looking for. Yeah, I, I could just refer to what you just um, mentioned there, Mark, and that's that in Stafford we developed a program where um, the economic development um, agency would provide funding for a company to come in and help them get up and running. Um, their development would then obviously, the property is already being taxed wherever they're going, right? So that would be the, the floor. Anything above that floor that the town is already getting would be the new tax revenue generated because we helped incentivize this project. And um, in Stafford, what we would do is we would take 10% of that um, and put it back in economic development programs. So. Moving forward in perpetuity, 10% um, of that new tax revenue would go into economic development programming. So basically, um, you're developing a, a, a recurring funding source now for economic development initiatives, as opposed to relying on just ARPA um, for, for a short period of time. So that's something that we did there. Um, we need to look at the legalities of what can be done in Connecticut versus Virginia. Um, we had to word it in a certain way um, to, to make it work there. Um, and we probably have to do the same thing here um, to, to you know, comply with all the regulations. But it's just a, it's a great tool then because now you have a pot of money that you can continue to go after other businesses and help promote economic development. And at any time the council can say, well, there's nothing else to develop. You know, we've been completely successful and we're going to shut it down and they can they can always do that later on down the line. But that was just an idea I threw out there because something that we had done in Stafford and it was getting a lot of um, positive results because we had a you know, number of projects that came in a very short time. And then there was now funding coming into that uh, pot of money that we can use moving forward. So the um, uh, well, we took that and Joy and I actually ran out in, in a spreadsheet and we took certain businesses and certain properties in town and took uh, potential increased value. Um, uh, I want Joy to be the one to go through it. She did most of the yeoman's work on that, and we can review that. Uh, hopefully, uh, she's uh, healthy and happy by Monday of next week. Um, so, from guys, from an RDA perspective, we're at a point now where we have now access to um, to 1.2. Um, we need to get a little more clarity on whether or not the facade money is included in that or not. And that's I didn't want to go into the weeds on that, Fred, in, in the EDIC meeting, but at what point will we get an accounting on what's in the 1.2, what's not in the 1.2, so we actually have an idea really what we're working with? Because 
Pat, when you were working with um, with the other members on the council, you guys gave us two or three items that you said we like these, these other ones so so, and these forget about. I, I just would like to understand what we're working up with from a budget perspective. I mean, the best the best way I could describe it is there was three of us, and nine of us have to approve it. Yeah. So, you know, just because we liked it doesn't mean that the other six are going to. So it was stuff that it was approved through subcommittee, but ultimately still has to be run through the town manager and Fred and, and uh, the rest of the council. So, um, you know, Fred kind of approached us and, and basically said, hey, this is my experience in Virginia. This is some things that um, I've done. This is these are sort of my ideas. So kind of taking your ideas combined with his. That's where we were kind of when he came back to us. Actually, if you remember, Mark, you guys were six hundred thousand or something. I, I don't remember the number off off the top of my head, but I think the total last was six hundred thousand. And Fred requested twice that. So um, we're trying to see, you know, combined with your input, Fred's Joya's to see what we can kind of come up with as a plan before it goes back to the totality of council. And we um, can provide more clarity, Mark, coming out of the meeting on the 6th of September, um, you know, what's included in that or not. Okay. So as a, uh, as an assignment for the group, for those of you that are on the um, RDA, um, we need to come with an idea, each of us, a fleshed out idea to present to the group. Um, is everybody good with that? All right, I don't see any negatives. Uh, what date um, are you, what, wait, uh, Mark, uh, idea by when? Um, I, we're gonna find out from Bryce if we're available on Monday and you're not required, Cindy, um, to provide one. Um, and I don't think you're officially on RDA, but you're certainly welcome to provide uh, an idea for that uh, and attending in that meeting. Um, yeah, I'd like to attend, yeah. You can put me on the list, the distribution mm -hmm. list. So what for time? Bryce, it, Bry Bryce needs to look at his schedule, um, and I, we're going to try to do something for Monday. At least that's what he said. That we that's not firmed up yet. I don't want to speak for him. Um, he's a busy person, um, but we need to get to a point. Uh, you know, I worry um, if if all of us are trying to order a pizza um, between people who might have gluten allergies or dairy allergies and veg, uh, people that don't eat meat and whatnot, we'd end up with no pizza at the end. That's kind of a concern I've got. And so we really need to um, uh, come down with an idea that's very specific, all of us, so uh, we can begin to find what we can work with and not work with so we can get access to this funding. Um, the second date, uh, you mentioned, Fred, the second meeting in September, is that correct? When we want to um, present by? Yeah, I think that's a good target uh, that gives this group uh, the, the committee time to meet and discuss ideas and then bring it back to this group and, and get, you know, on the 8th. Um, and then that'll set us up for the for the second meeting in September. What's the date on that? Do you have that just by chance? I can pull it up for you right now. It is 19th. Thank you, sir. Um, so potential properties discussion. I mean, um, we know that we need to have willing um, uh, owners of properties to work. I, again, with Joy Net being here, um, I mean, we know that they're, I believe that Metaplex, that businesses, do you, you might have some information, Tommy. Has that closed Metaplex? That's a done deal or no? It it's, it is a done deal. It didn't close yet. As, as I knew, it was supposed to close probably two weeks ago. It was some holdback. Uh, it could have closed this week at this point, but it's it's been like imminent. Okay, great. Um, any other questions regarding funding sources, which is that's what we're talking about. We have funding already. Uh, we just need to figure out what are the incentives that we can utilize um, uh, with this potential with potential developers on on projects in town, and again, what programs we can put together uh, mm -hmm. that will create projects uh, with developers. Um, any other questions or, or comments regarding the 1.2 or what we need to accomplish for our next meeting, which will be in combination with uh, the finance committee? I think the finance committee is going to meet when we meet, Mark, that'll be me, you, um, Joya, and Fred, uh, and Bryce, and we'll come out of that and be able to report to this group. Um, 
and I think we all have some good ideas because we've been we've been talking through, but uh, we won't know until we have that actual meeting on Monday or Tuesday. Mark, can you send us the final list of the wish list that um, if it if it has not changed, then that's okay. But if there were any changes in it, you're talking about for the our ARPA, for the request ARPA funds. Yeah, for the ARPA funds. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Yep. Is that going to be to the entire EDIC? I think that. Sure. Yeah, that would be great. All right, guys, any new business? Any other business? <laughs> any monkey business? No? Okay, great. Um, guys, our next meeting is scheduled uh, for September 8th. Um, again, we'll be meeting uh, as soon as we can um, to get the ball rolling. When we do collectively get together, we do need to come uh, come together with an idea on uh, a program uh, that would be um, incentivizing uh, potential development or redevelopment here in town. Who had kids in Catholic school, and some um, something about Catholic school. Um, they threw me out, so I did. I think. <laughs> I, I did not make that cut. Any other questions or, or, or comments from uh, the group? Mr. Sullivan? Kevin, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, thank you. I just have general interest uh, in both committees with regard to uh, bike pit infrastructure and also uh, how that interfaces with Silestine Highway, which I hope becomes Silestine Boulevard soon. Um, all of that is uh, to be determined. Um, so st stand by or stay tuned. Under understood. Any Thank you. Right. Thank you for participating. I have some good news, Mark. Okay, Broad, I'll Street take is, Broad Street is going to be paved soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm um, thrilled. <laughs> um, amen. Do all right, guys. A, a lane striping on that? I hope so, but well, I, don't I mean, uh, shoulder, was, st shoulder striping. Yeah. From that was my question to Kevin when he sent out the last uh, Facebook thing this morning or email this morning. I hope it will have uh, striping so we can actually be safe riding our bikes and walking. Derek well, recently um, told me that there is going to be striping. Oh, hooray. Beautiful. Uh, now we just have to stop people wearing black shorts and black t-shirts at 9 30 at night um, I know. Uh, walking around the green i don't know what it is um, um, um august 1st um, there was a article that tom carson promoted on complete streets it was actually mm -hmm. a, a advertorial um uh on mayor aaron stewart on complete streets and talking about um bike lanes and sidewalks etc good article thank you for that tom mm -hmm. um did you want to mention or, or just share anything on that article tom or was that just for our education? For education, situational awareness, you know, it goes into some people think sometimes when I go off on a tangent about the <laughs> Silestine Highway and making it more walkable and bikeable and more equitable for everybody and better for public transportation, that there's a real economic benefit to the whole thing. So that's the only reason why I wanted everybody to see it. Yeah. And I just thing. I want to support that fully. And I think we need to also think about. Not, I mean, at World Weather School, we've made some strides and we certainly aspire to that along the Silestine Highway, but it's a town-wide effort. And there's some really dangerous streets and Knott Street is one of them where you could slow down. Uh, the, you have a st school there, it's on the Heritage Trail, the cross-country team goes there, it's coming out of the woods. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, we've already had one death. Uh, we need to really think about this and, um, I think it, there's a, an intangible but important benefit of just walkability and livability throughout the town that we need to consider and uh, incorporate um, in our value and you know our efforts at in EDIC. Thank you for that, Cindy. You're right. All right, guys. Um, you know, redevelopment needs two things: we need properties to uh, redevelop, and we need funding. Um, and we are in the process of getting uh, addressing the funding side of it. Um, and once we have those programs, we can start to be able to reach out um, uh, and be even more proactive. Uh, Tom, your efforts and Joy's efforts could be even more 
uh, doubled if you had some another tool in your pocket other than your sparkling personality. Um, it would be nice, um, and we're getting to that level. Um, guys, I've got nothing else to add. Anybody else want to have uh, any additional conversation on any other topics? All right. Um, can we have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Penelo and Judy seconded. All right, guys, thank you. Um, I look forward to hearing from Bryce and uh, guys, some of you on here, I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you for your time.